What if I told you that the foundation of Web3 is already here? A single platform that could unite all real-world assets, blockchains, and artificial intelligence seamlessly. And what if I told you that the key to unlocking Web3's full potential lied in a platform called Block V? Stick around because by the end of this video, you'll learn why Block V isn't just another blockchain protocol. It's the Web3 operating system. When I look at what your company, Vadim, is doing, I see the potential of what Apple did to the personal computer revolution, later the phone revolution. I look at what Adobe did to tools that made uh, graphics work so powerful on desktop computers. I look at what Salesforce did using a cloud-based system to run sales. To understand why Web3 needs an operating system to reach its full potential, let's take a look at the evolution of the internet we use today and the role that operating systems played in shaping it. In the early days of the internet, Web1 was static. Browsers like the Netscape Navigator were the operating system. They acted as the interface for users to interact with simple, static websites. Then came Web2. The era of apps, platforms, and user-generated content, mobile systems like iOS and Android became the backbone enabling the app economy and connecting billions of users worldwide. Uh, my great friend and, and uh, uh, incredible futurist, uh, Peter Diamantis, calls these the interface moments, the moments when the complexity of these technologies that are generally in a small niche set of users suddenly become mainstream. And they become mainstream because of two factors. One on one side is that People can create things on this confluence of technologies to make money. They actually they get motivated to do it. And the reason is because on the other side, there's an interface layer where people can consume it simply, easily, conveniently. And that's what the web did to the internet. That's what the iPhone in some ways did to mobile internet. And now we have the next great step change. Now we're entering Web3, a decentralized internet of value powered by blockchains, tokenized assets, and artificial intelligence. But here's the problem. Web3 is fragmented. A Web3 operating system is not a single blockchain. It's a layer of infrastructure that connects everything in the decentralized world. Your digital assets, your wallets, your apps, and even real-world assets like stocks, gold, and vehicles. Think of it as the glue that binds Web3 together, making it interoperable, intuitive, and scalable. Web3 operating system, if done effectively, will act as an interface moment. Blockchain is a protocol, very much like TCP IP, the internet is a protocol, but it's not really been something that any of us use anywhere near as much as we use the internet. If you remember the very first time you use the internet and you said, what is this thing called email or what is this thing of a web browser? That same transition is occurring right now. And Block V is an interface moment. It's, uh, it's something that's lying on top of blockchain that's gonna allow blockchain to become extraordinarily usable. It's gonna create tremendous amount of wealth and it's gonna change the way that we think of and use uh, blockchain in general. I think you'll walk away with a, not only an interface moment, but a holy shit moment as well. A Web3 operating system would create that unifying layer that Web3 so desperately needs to really reach its full potential of mass adoption. It will enable apps, decentralized apps, to communicate all across chains. It'll allow users to control their data with an intuitive interface. And it will also allow AI to seamlessly integrate Web2, Web3, and all of the applications. It will be a common standard, a common operating system for the builders to build and the users to use. Now, let's talk about Block V and why it's positioned to be the premier Web3 operating system. 
Block V is more than just a blockchain project. It's a protocol that enables the creation of smart NFTs, also known as VATOMs, virtual atoms, which are interactive, programmable digital assets. Blockchain 3.0 includes tokens 3.0. And so I'd like to introduce the VATOM. This is the next generation cryptocurrency. It's an entirely new asset class created by BlockV that enables the end user to meaningfully interact with these digital tokens. This is the experiential currency of the future. These smart NFTs can represent anything from real world assets, digital collectibles, stable coins, stocks, or even tokenized medical records. And, and then you, know, you start to go from there and you're like, oh my gosh, if I could do that, then it could be a ticket. If it could be a ticket, it can be a, a HIPAA compliant prescription bottle. It could be a land title. So we start to get into my background, which was policy and state changes and IOT. And, and you suddenly, the, the light bulb goes up and says, my gosh, this is the evolution of human engagement. But what makes BlockV the Web3 operating system is its interoperability. It doesn't just create assets, it connects them. Assets, apps, wallets, and AI systems all speak the same language through Block V, making it the backbone of a unified Web3 ecosystem. And we're already seeing this in action. Visa, one of the largest payment processors in the world, they've already taken this technology and have begun to utilize it on a global scale. Right here, you'll see a graphic from the Block V white paper detailing the characteristics of a VATOM smart NFT. And you'll notice that this same graphic is on the Visa website. We've covered this extensively. If you're not up to speed, check out the Block V playlist. The link is in the description. But we're seeing some of the largest corporations in the world take this technology in house. And they're gonna utilize it to tokenize literally everything, right? Think about real world assets. Assets in the real world, what are they made of? They're made of atoms, right? This pen right here, it can only be in one place at one time because of atoms. So Eric Poulier, Reeve Collins, Peter Diamantis, Craig Sellers, Lucas Fleury, the geniuses behind this protocol over a decade ago realized that everything that can be tokenized will be tokenized. And it will, it will be tokenized as a real world asset. So if objects in the real world are made of atoms, then objects in this virtual world need to be made of VATOMs, virtual atoms. And this is really where we get the idea of a trillion object opportunity, right? There's millions of apps, there's billions of websites, there's gonna be trillions of these virtual atoms. We're already seeing giants like BlackRock, Vanguard, you name it, everybody is starting to move into the tokenization of real world assets. And that's why Block V is such an interesting um, protocol because nobody really knows about it. If you're watching this video, you're one of few. We're at the foundation of a community for an ecosystem that is positioned to be the operating system of Web3. And Visa aren't just the only ones who have taken this and started to uh, build with it. We've also seen Starbucks. We've seen Procter & Gamble. We've seen Unilever. We've seen NBA. We've seen Accenture. Right? We've seen the Open Wallet Foundation, which has members such as Google. Google, by the way, has also incorporated the VATOM metaverse into their global system. Right? The list goes on and on and on. We've covered it so extensively. But the Web3 operating system, whatever is successfully becomes the de facto Web3 operating system, we're putting it on the same shelf as what Netscape was which was then kind of taken over by Microsoft, right? Microsoft created the really first big, widely used and winner of Web 1 operating systems, right? And Web 2, Android, iOS, Web 3 doesn't have an operating system. And if we look at the players behind Block V, we look at the integrations behind Block V, and we look at how silent, they're not focused on hype, they've been focused on building, right? And that is just so bullish to me. Please leave your comments below, subscribe to the channel, check the links in the description, like this video, and I'll see you guys next time.